up gamers, welcome back. This video is gonna be about shooting on film. What is it? Why do people still do it? And how do you get into it? So what is shooting on film? If you're younger, you might be ignorant to what film is. And when I was younger, I didn't know what it was either. Uh, I thought a camera was just a camera. It takes photos, that's it. Shooting on film is just essentially how people shot photos back in the day before digital cameras were the main thing to use and before they existed. If you're my age, you probably remember like your parents using disposable film cameras that wind it up and things like that. Or it could be a 35 millimeter SLR like some of the film cameras that I use. But basically the process of taking the photo is the same. Light exposes onto something, but instead of exposing onto a digital sensor, it's exposing onto film. And then you develop it later in order to get your photo. Here's a couple of film cameras that I own. All right, so first up we have my Minolta X700. It's a very trusty little 35 millimeter camera. I use this one the most. And then we have my Olympus IS-3 DLX, which is just my essentially SLR point and shoot. Then I have a Samoka 35 that I rarely use. It's just cool because it's like 70 years old. And then I have a Minolta Maxim 5000i that's broken. Now, most of those cameras are 35 millimeter SLR cameras. Uh, there's also medium format shooting, which is really cool, but I haven't gotten into that yet. And I'm hoping to get into it in the future, but essentially it's just bigger film. So how does shooting on film work? On a digital camera, you put an SD card in your camera, you take the photo and it saves to the SD card, right? When you're shooting on film, you are advancing the film strip through your camera body. On certain cameras, the camera will advance the strip itself, or you advance it yourself with the advance lever. On most film cameras, you're gonna set the aperture and the shutter speed yourself. The aperture is often actually physically on the lens and the shutter speed is on the camera body. If you're used to shooting on digital, you might be asking yourself, what about ISO? Well, we'll get into that later. The shutter lifts up and light exposes onto the film. Then you wind that advanced lever again and your next shot is ready. So let's talk about film speeds. It's a pretty simple concept. The film I loaded into my Minolta on camera right there was Cinestill 800T. That number on the film represents the film speed. The higher that number, the more sensitive the film is to light. Essentially what that means is the higher that number, the better the film will perform in low light, but also the more grainy the photo is gonna look. A lot of people like the film grain aesthetic, so that's not really a huge issue. But that Cinestill 800T, that's pretty high up on the film speed number tier. Uh, it's by all means not the highest, but it's still pretty high up there. That Cinestill is really good for like neon film photography at night. It's a very, very cool film that reacts in a really cool and unique way with light. Now let's compare that to Cinestill 50D. This is their daylight film. It's gonna look a lot smoother because the film speed is only at 50. It's meant to be used in basically direct sunlight or just really high key lighting scenarios. You're gonna have a much harder time shooting at night, especially shooting at night handheld with this film. But if you're on a tripod, you could definitely do a long exposure on 50D, like I did right here. But basically the gist is, the higher the film speed, the brighter it's gonna be, and the noisier or more film grainier it's gonna be. And that's it. What's nice about film speeds is that, unlike shooting on digital where you have to worry about shutter speed, aperture, and ISO, on a film camera, you only need to worry about shutter and aperture. Now, technically you could uh, do what's called pushing or pulling your film where you actually set the uh, film speed higher up or lower, and that'll actually change how the film reacts. But I never really do that. I've never really gotten into it. I just kind of use it how it's intended. So why shoot on film in the age of the digital camera? Well, I don't really have an answer for you. The digital camera is gonna outperform any film camera any day. My personal answer would be is that it's just more fun. There is a plethora of film to mess with. Cinestill, Fujifilm, Kodak. There are so many different types of film to experiment with and then you have to wait to get your results. So you're always kind of having something to look forward to. Whether you develop your film yourself at home or you send it off, there's still a waiting period and you have this anticipation to see the photos that you took. If you're shooting on 35 millimeter film, you only get 36 shots per roll. So you need to make sure that every single shot counts. You need to imagine that photo in your head before you take it, as opposed to shooting on digital where you can just take 
as many photos as you want, it doesn't matter. And to top that off, people really love the aesthetic of film. No matter what film stock it is, there's just something about film photography that looks different from digital photography. Now, of course, you can replicate the look of film on a digital camera, but it's not really the same thing in the end. I guess it's just a cool analog purist thing, if you're into that. So, how do you get started shooting on film? So, like I said before, the thing about film is that you can't see your photo until it is developed. So you kinda need to know your shit before you get started. Like I said before, you want to make every single shot count, because you only get 36 of them, and film isn't necessarily cheap. So what you're going to want to know is how your light meter works, and how aperture, shutter, and film speed affect the reading on your light meter. You also are probably going to want to know how to manual focus, and you want to know how aperture relates to depth of field when you're focusing. Now that's not to say that there aren't film cameras with automatic settings. There are. But, again, it's the same comparison where you're shooting manual on a digital camera versus using automatic settings on a digital camera. If you use automatic settings, the camera is just kind of guessing your results. Whereas when you set all of your settings manually, you are telling the camera what to do to get your result. So if we take a look at my Minolta X700, there are automatic settings on this camera. You can see there's a, a little P for program mode and then an A for automatic on the dial over here. But the thing is, it's not going to set the aperture of the ISO like it would on a digital camera. Because on this film camera, the aperture is physically controlled by this ring. So there's no way a computer in here can change the aperture of this lens. There's no, like, digital communication. There's no ISO. ISO instead is film speed. The film I have in right here is Cinestill 800T. If we were to compare this directly to a digital camera, it would be like I'm at ISO 800 constantly. If you put this setting on automatic, it's only going to be looking at your light meter and then setting the shutter speed correlating to get a perfectly exposed photo. You get what I mean? So if you have a camera like this, there's really no point in using the automatic setting because it's really just saying, hey, use this shutter speed. Everything else you're still setting yourself. Focus, aperture, and then your film speed's already set. So let me go ahead and contradict what I just said. My Olympus IS3 DLX, I can never remember the name, this camera was basically designed in use with automatic settings. It's essentially just kind of like a point and shoot, but for 35 millimeter film photography. There are manual settings on this. You can set the focus, shutter, and aperture, but it's not engineered that way. It's not ergonomic to actually use this camera manually. What do I mean by that? So like if I want to set my focus on this camera manually, instead of having like a nice focus ring to quickly change it, I would have to use these two buttons in a certain mode. And then these wouldn't zoom in or out anymore. My focal length would be stuck. And then I would have to use manual focusing with this, which is just, it just takes way too long. Same thing right here on top. To set my shutter speed, I would have to move this dial back and forth. And then to change my aperture, I have to go back into the camera, change to aperture mode, and then use this to change aperture. It just takes way too long. So I often use this camera with like cheaper film, uh, just for fun, just as a point and shoot with photos that I don't really find as important. I've had a roll of film in this thing for like the last year that I still haven't finished. Uh, it's kind of just like my throwaway point and shoot film camera. Now you could obviously start shooting film on something like this, but you're not really going to be training yourself when it comes to shooting in manual. You'll probably get some good photos out of it, but you're not really learning what photography is about. One big benefit of shooting on film is learning to train your photographer's eye. Looking at something and then deciding, do I want to make a photo out of this? Because like I said before, on a digital camera, you can fill a 64 gig SD card with 4,000 photos and then go look at them later. But on a roll of film, you only have 36 shots. I mean, disposable film cameras are kind of a trend that are coming back again, and you could go, you know, buy 40 of them and take a bunch of random photos and decide which ones you want to keep later, but that's not really photography, is it? And I know that's probably not why you're here watching this video. So another big question, where do you get a film camera? You gotta be a little resourceful. Most of my film cameras were given to me, or I bought them off a friend, or at a thrift store. They're not making film cameras anymore. My Minolta that I use all the time, I had an older friend who's been a photographer for years, and he had another friend who was selling it, and then I bought it for like 200 bucks. My Olympus was given to me by my mother's friend, because they didn't want it anymore. Go to thrift stores, look around, make sure to test the cameras out to see if they expose. I was in Portland like two or three years ago with some friends, 
and I went into a thrift store and I found this little camera sitting on the shelf for 28 bucks. Kind of funny because I only had like $40 in my account because I had just bought a digital camera before and that's a different story. It's very old. I believe when I looked it up it's from the 1950s. It's not an interchangeable lens camera, it's just kind of like, it's just on there. But what I did when I checked it out, I opened up the back and then I pulled the lever and you'll see right here. So that was the camera exposing. Nothing else on this camera works. The, the light meter is completely broken. It still will expose on the film. So it works as a camera. That's literally all a film camera is. Light goes through a lens and exposes onto the film. That's all you need for it to work. Now, when I'm actually using this camera, which mind you is not very often, I kind of just have it to sit on the shelf and look cool. I'll use like an app on my phone. You can get light meter apps on your phone that you can point at a subject and they'll tell you what settings to put or what settings are the best to put it at. And some people will probably be like, oh, that's cheating. But I mean, if your light meter on your camera doesn't work, I'm not just gonna, I can't do those calculations in my head. That's just, that's just a waste of time, come on. But yeah, I mean, it's a pretty, it's a pretty cool find. I mean, this thing, it's like, it's all metal. It's just, I really wonder, you know, who was the first person to buy this camera? Who was it passed down to? What photos have gone through it? How many rolls of film have gone through it? This thing is so old, it's crazy. The point of that, just look around, be resourceful, ask around, go to thrift stores, go on eBay. Uh, you could ask your parents or maybe grandpa died. I don't know. So maybe you really like the aesthetic of film cameras, but you've never used a real camera before in your life. So should you start shooting on a film camera or a digital camera? Well, if you're going chronologically, technically, everybody started on film cameras and then they went to digital. But in this day and age, I personally recommend buy a cheap digital camera, learn how the manual settings, shutter, ISO, and aperture affect your photo, and then go to a film camera. Because if you're gonna get a camera that has pretty much entirely manual settings and you don't know what's going on, you might just end up wasting a lot of film. And that's gonna end up costing you a lot of money and a lot of time and a lot of resources. And then maybe you're just gonna get frustrated and stop altogether. It's not worth it. You could definitely always challenge yourself and start on film like the boomers did. I'm, I'm not gonna knock you for doing that. It's just gonna be harder. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I hope it gave you a little insight on film photography. As always, my name's Tanner, and I'll see you next week with another video.